Welcome to Bottom Line Sports Talk. I'm George Abraham. You know my partner, Albert Campman. From time to time, Al, we like to do some special shows, and we have one that uh, we've prepared today to talk about the greatest college teams of all times. Now, let's be specific. You guys that are listening to the podcast, watching, choose your order, choose your teams, believe that we know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and also we did not give a school more than one representative. In other words, we could have Miami on there three times. And yeah, the one that stands out to me is Nebraska. Oh, um, back in the day. Many, many, many times they will put the, the 1995 team as the, as the greatest team ever. Uh, <laughs> I, my greatest team ever was the 1971 team, so I, I had to leave out that 1995 Nebraska team that just killed Florida in the, in the championship game. But, Jake, you, know, you, you decide which one of these we like or – Please get a hold of us if you see, yeah, a see one that we forgot. Oh. That's not a member. But each school only allowed one team. Like yeah. Southern Cal could have three. Yeah. Nebraska could have Notre three. Dame could Notre have, three. have three. Four. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, one, one thing, too, I just you, you tickled me with the Nebraska thing. They're ready to name a coach out there. And I got into it the other day with RG3. RG3, <laughs> he says that that's the prime job. And I said, RG3, 30 years ago it was, or it if was. they were not in the now. Big Eight. That's no prime. Not even prime job, no. They can't it's not, compete. It's not, in the, it's not in the top 20 jobs in the country. No, and they can't compete in the Big Ten as it is. Yeah. Let's start at the top. Miami Hurricanes, 2001. Um, average margin of victory. Now, we need to digest this. 34 point per game margin. That means if they won by 18, they had to win one by 65. Yeah, when George goes down this list, and he, just, he happened to start with this. This is my, I think this is the greatest team, by the way. I thought the 2001 Miami Hurricanes were the, were the greatest team with, with Shockey and Andre Johnson and Clinton Portis and Ed Reed and Ben Fulpork and that crew. Vilma. Uh, yeah, you can leave. Yeah, there's, there's, there's other kids that are guys that are unbelievable. That, this is my greatest team. Uh, the rest of them can go to, to, in, in second place. Um, but, but the 2001 Hurricanes, uh, they were explosive offensively, killers defensively, but more importantly, had runaway Pro Bowl players. So in, not only were they were good in college, they went yeah. on. And, and, yeah. Hey, let's talk about that for a minute. They murdered, murdered Nebraska, Nebraska in the Rose Bowl. That wasn't a take names game. I remember that game. Yeah, 37-14. And uh, uh, when you talk about the Canes during that time, and we know Florida at that time was the king of high school football, they and Florida State were getting them all. Yeah. No, they, no one was leaving. They were Noah's Ark, two of everything. Yeah, they hey. were not going to Alabama. They no. were not. No. Going, they were not no. going out to Texas. No, they were going to they Nebraska. Were going one of those two, they were going one of those schools, Miami Florida, or, Florida State or Miami. Miami or there. Yeah. Nebraska's time had wings. Still good. Yeah. Still very hey, good, but not uh, as good. You have a Wolfork. Don't you have a Wolfork? What are your guys coached against them? Yeah, my a guy who played for me said, listen, there's a, there's a kid playing for this school in high school that you're going to hear about. He's the best player I've ever seen in high school. No one can block him. I said, what's his name? He said, Vince Wilfork. And uh, he ended up being the, the stalwart of New England's dynasty How long? under yeah. Belichick. Hey, you remember, too, it's, all these big guys think they're hoopers. You know, it's just <laughs> nature. And I watched him, like, messing around in hoops. And for a man that size, he wasn't too stinking bad. No. They, they jump up on the rim like there's nothing to it. No, well, we told a story. They're, they're, 300, about, they're 330 uh, pounds, 340 Yeah, the guy's pounds. jumping up there like that. You know, Warren Sapp, a buddy of mine, his, son, of his son lived with him. And he could take his uh, flip-flops off and dunk a basketball flat-footed. That's who, that's who the Canes had, those kind Six of players. Two, oh, and another story on the Canes. You'll like this one. One of my guys was a quarterback at Syracuse. So he goes to a Big East track meet. Miami had guys in three of the eight lanes. And they were football one, players, football too. Football players, too. No, they weren't. Yeah. The, at one time, I remember reading, they had the fastest guys in three different states on their football teams. <laughs> now, think about that for that's a minute. That's who they had. That was, yeah. That's the Canes. How about the They took 70, no prisoners, by the way, either. <laughs> no, no. Now, they weren't worried about were you mad when you left. <laughs> they gave you that old, if you don't want us to dance, stop us. Yeah, that's right. How about the Southern Cal Trojans, 72? Well, the 72 team, is, was, that's when I graduated from high school, and that was the legendary coach, John McKay, was there at the time. And uh, Sam the Bam Cunningham changed college football in the South. 
Tell them about yeah. it because they might not yeah, know. Yeah, he played Alabama and, and they couldn't tackle he Sam was, the band. He had three tutties. He was diving over the pile. And yeah. After the game, old Bear said, we need one of those Sam kind of men. <laughs> he said, we got to get some of those boys. He said, we can't compete with them. No, the, the, the South wasn't integrated. Not at all. No. And, yeah, and remember now, this isn't 1938. No, it wasn't. Because Al and I had, had And it was shocking to me because I grew up in a black high school. Yeah. So at yeah. Farrell, oh, yeah. we never so I'm even, thinking. never even thought about it. I never thought it. Alabama does how many black guys playing. I, I, it's amazing. Remember when we were down <laughs> in Nashville, we had some clients, and they would put on the old game where Steve Spurrier was kicking the extra points. <laughs> yes. The guys were all white. Every, bit, every and, player on the team. And you didn't notice it right away. <laughs> you certainly did. Now, did they murder Ohio State in the Rose Bowl? Yeah, a really, really, really good Ohio State team, too. So it wasn't like it wasn't a good one. They beat the crap out of uh, 25, 25 oh. points. Um, Southern Cal at that time, in the, in the early 70s, was a runaway freight train, too. And so uh, the 72 John McKay team, there's a lot of Southern Cal teams. <laughs> and uh, Pete Carroll had a great one himself that I could have put on, put on yeah, there. Yeah, you could have put Reggie Bush. I could have put on there. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. they lost to Texas, though, which, you know. Yeah, they did. Hey, Al, yeah, you know, another thing, too, when you talk about that, they got every vote. Every vote? Yeah. For the Remember, chance. at that time, they voted everything. Absolutely. Yeah, today it was, you know, computer rankings yeah, or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. But every, and they, yeah, they got every vote in the postseason from AP, UPI, yeah, they were, Sporting News. Yeah, they got right them. Right down yeah. the line, yeah. they got them all. It's not one of those championships Alabama gave. Split. Yeah. Alabama gave them. Oh, we got another name guy. Still talks about that. Oh, yeah. He said, no, I, they should have yeah, won it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they didn't. But the 72 Southern Cal team did. Yeah. How about the Cornhusker 71? Yeah, I can't leave that one out. Um, even though they said the, the 95 Nebraska team, they thought people pick over them. My 71 team, I was in awe of that team with Johnny Rogers. I was in awe with Jeff Taggy right down in, in Oklahoma right that time. I could have put that Oklahoma loss, so I couldn't put was it that in that there. Was that that Jack Mildred team? Yes. That was oh, Jack Jesus. Mildred. Hey, yeah. I want to talk about that for a minute because we always, we always are naming the offense. That team only gave up eight points per game. I know. Think of that. No, no. <laughs> today you can't even. The rules probably wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You. They couldn't do it today because the no. rules. You know, but at that time, eight points, and they would score thirty nine. So they, they were being teams forty to eight every game. Uh, as I said, Oklahoma was that good. 35-31. I still consider it not the, not the Michigan State Notre Dame game. Game is. I still consider that the favorite my favorite game I ever watched with two teams that were just unbelievably great. Not good. These were great. It wasn't an exciting game. It was more than exciting. It was a game of execution. Stars at every stars spot. Stars all over the place, yes. Yeah, we, we talk about that. And I remember, sometimes for me, they'll run together. I agree. That's for me, too. But, I mean, no, when I look at I just this, happen to big, be a big fan yeah. of those two yeah. teams Well, at the it time. jogs my memory. And when I see, I remember. This. Well, the greatest punt return ever is in that game. That's Johnny Rogers. Known, he became famous yeah. in Nebraska yeah. lore because his punt return won the game for Nebraska. How about Texas 05? Yeah, that team, you know, when you see the scoring of they, what they did the teams, 653 to 213, <laughs> uh, that's when Vince Young became the quarterback of today's games that could run and pass, um, a great defense, and Mac Brown made his name on, on that team, and, and uh, that was a great game too. Hey, we had a against lesson. The, against the great Southern Cal team. We had a lesson that night. So I remember coming out of the lesson and saying, and the score was like close. That we, and I thought, this is going to be last one with the ball. That's and exactly what happened. I didn't know that, but it sure sounded that way. I can see Vince Young holding the ball in the corner of the end zone. Oh, they uh, he won that game. And, and remember, they beat an undefeated previous national champion, Southern Cal, in that game. That's how great Texas had to be to win that game. No, that, uh, there was nothing wrong with that Southern Cal team. Yeah. Great, first great, I think it was the first great, 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 great offensive team. I mean, remember, they put up 653 points. Yeah, you figure George. out 13 games. That's 40 <laughs> points a game. That yes. is. That, yeah, that, it that's is. That's a lot of points. Yes. Now, here's one I'll have we to have, take. We don't know this one. Yes. But I've, in other words, I've read a lot. I've heard a lot. I've seen a lot of uh, old newsrooms right, and such. Right. Army 45. Yeah, the Army 45 team for your old timers that, talk, that your grandpa or your dad talked to you about. Uh, <laughs> Two Heisman winners in the same backfield. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said it right, fans. Yeah. Blanchard and Davis, right? <laughs> yes, yes. One guy was called Doc. The other one was Glenn Davis. Yeah, that's they won they it back-to-back 45-46. Back 
I remember the service academies back then. This is uh, right after World War II. Yes. A lot of these guys are coming in 20, 21 years old. Yeah, and, and at that time, there was a city at the game. <laughs> at that time, now today, there was 110,000 fans at, at, big, at you know, Michigan and these places. Navy Army game that year drew 100, excuse, excuse me, 102,000 fans at that game. Um, they also played Notre Dame. Who? How was that game? Forty-eight nothing. How about Penn? They did Penn well. sixty-one nothing. These are two. Te these were teams at that time. We were and it's still our favorite game, Army Navy. Though we've number talked one. about it's that. our number one rivalry. Yeah, absolutely doesn't matter. Remember, what rivalry yeah. means yeah. that everybody in the country yeah. has, a, has is part of it. When they Auburn run and down, Alabama, yeah, yeah. Not on that part, yeah. That's oh yeah, there. around here, but up here, yeah, we happen to watch. I just whoever I bet on. Around, exactly. yeah, no, I know, I understand. Yeah, around the but country, Army Navy, when they get down to that other end game. and sing that, that oh my, goose pimples. No, that's yeah. no, I yeah. agree. And, and, and great, it, glad you said that because this is interesting. The other day, Navy played Notre Dame. Play them off their feet. Yeah, but here's the thing: they went back and went over the history. How there were times when, when they helped each other. It's why Notre Dame still plays them because the Navy helped. Like when World War II, they were in trouble student wise. Interesting. They, you know, I like that. Were all fighting. Yeah. yeah, I like that story. Now talk about good. '94 Penn State because yeah. that was no joke. No, that team was really good. It's not my favorite team. I I, I should have put my favorite the 1966 Penn State team with um, the, the the Reed and you know, that, that. So they that had camp. Bobby Ingram. On this team, yes. Kerry Collins. And remember, Kerry Collins was a number one, was a number one oh, no, draft no. choice. And, and how about Kajana Carter? Who was unbelievable. As oh, I remember, my. as a college running We're back. We're not talking pros. You put him in the top ten of all time. I thought of college. That's how good they were. Perfect season in the Rose Bowl. Murdered Oregon. Beat Oregon in the in the 38-20, people. Um, but they had to put up, go up against Nebraska that year. And uh, Ka, this doesn't happen too often. We have three players, Collins, Carter, and Kyle Brady. Picked in the top ten in the NFL draft. That's pure talent. Yeah, I think, no, I That's don't know that talent. I've seen that. That's pure talent. That's LSU stuff today. Yeah, it is. Today it is. Today yes, Alabama. It is. Yeah. When you have three guys in the top ten, I know Collins was. He didn't have the pro career we thought he'd have. No, he didn't. But that happens. Got, John Carter some injury, but yeah, the Bengals. He got hurt. Bit. He got hurt. And Kyle Brady played for a while. It was awesome. I think he was from Camp Hill. Was he? I think. I think oh. he is too. Yeah. I think he is. Too. Ringing a bell. Big, the thing that stood out about this team, tie, George, yeah. that I wanted to share with the audience was. Uh, they made our list. They were, the, they were the only team, I think, that made our list that did not vote, did not win the national championship. No. That's, but they were undefeated in that grade. When I watched them play, I, and uh, I had to include them in there um, because at one time, not now, Penn State was a national power, a no. national power. No, they're a notch below. No, that's Ohio State. Yeah, that's Ohio State. They are. They were Ohio they State were at one time. what Ohio State is now. Every yes. year, if they're below four, you have to ask. What's wrong? But it was interesting because I heard Ryan Day say, allude to the amount of money he would need to keep this program on the tracks, and it's scary. He's going to get it. It's scary. He's going to get it. That's, a, that's the part of scary. Now, let's talk 90, uh, 68 Buckeyes because I know one of your guys was on there. Yes, this, remember, this, this is my favorite team. Rex Kern? Yeah. And my favorite player of all time. Talk about that team. Uh, everything I did in high school, I tried to copy Rex Kern of the 1968 Buckeyes. Um, I have that team as the best team ever at Ohio State. And I think all the great Ohio State teams, yeah. I know you Ohio fans yeah, you are might watching find, you all might think, these Ohio's. Oh, wait a minute. Now, there's three of them I like better than that team, but they had 11 All-Americans on that team. Six, plat 11. Six, six NFL, NFL draftees. Draft. Beat, beat Michigan 50-14. Beat the great USC, USC 27-16 in the goal uh, in the uh, Rose Bowl. Um, the great fullback at that time, remember, was a fullback-driven uh, country, Jim Otis, along with Rex Kern, and the, and the guy that probably one of the most noted guys yeah. on that team became Jack Tatum, who would just uh, just was a terrorizer. He'd decapitate you back there. Yes. Remember, this is back before you couldn't touch the receivers. You'd be running a, oh, he just put his arm yeah, on. Now, remember, the ball wasn't thrown yet. Let's understand. The, the ball was not in the air. If you were running across the middle with your head turned, no, you just put, no. they would clothesline you and try to take your neck off. Then the rules had to change. Well, changed. he had a guy that ended up paralyzed for life. He did Stingley, and, yes. And the rumor was he never, he says he tried. The rumor was he never contacted him. Yeah, no one ever uh, changed the rules like Tatum and Mal Blunt. They had to change the rules because Mal Blunt would take his receiver as he was running down the field, and they'd find him laying behind the bench. <laughs> said, wait a minute. 
Mel. You got to let the guy stay on the field. He would take him and push him into the into the bench. You yeah. got to change the rules. And he was—he had the size of oh, a he's linebacker. Huge. Yes. Yeah. Hey, one more thing too about that. You know, you talk about you know that type of play, that physical play. They've tried to knock it out of the game today because of the head injury. Mm -hmm. They didn't care then in one bet. <laughs> no, no. No. Yeah, that 1968 Ohio State team was uh, with Rex Kern. Rex Kern was a magician with the ball, a decent thrower, but just a tremendous leader. And he's, you know, his, his life's been uh, just... They didn't pass like they did. No, we no. Have to understand. You Ohio young, State, well, Woody Hayes didn't believe in the pass. No, you young kids <laughs> have to understand it. You know, 12 passes was a lot. Woody Hayes said there's... Uh, three, when you pass the ball three, three times, things. two, two are bad. Two are Interceptor incomplete. <laughs> yeah, he's. I gotta do two things bad. I'll run it. <laughs> and he did. The 1999 Florida State Seminoles. Wow. What number one from the beginning of the season to the end? There's been a lot of great Florida State teams. This is the one we picked. Um, they had all kind of players all over the field again. We saw Anquan Bolden become have a great pro career. We saw Peter Warwick have a, have a great, but. but uh, you're, you're, you're talking I remember about Lavernius Coles. I remember the name. Point. It was distinct. Yeah, so many of them. Yes, they had so many. And they beat Virginia Tech. They beat Michael Vick. Michael Vick came with his big reputation into this game. Yeah. They scored 46 points against Virginia Tech and beat them. This Seminole team, it was the first that I saw uh, out of the Miami, the 2001 Miami team. Talk but, about but Bobby this, Bowden, But this too. is the first one I saw yeah. that one was speed. I mean, it, you, yeah. you would watch the game and think, Jeez. They're faster. They're faster than everybody else. Yeah. They were really fast. They wore the white shoes and stuff back, and it was different. <laughs> they, we laugh now. Everybody's got orange shoes on. And, and that's where else. Dion ended up, you know, uh, Sanders ended up going. But the, the, they, they um, had Bobby Bowden coach, and we always rave about Bobby Bowden, that he was the very first guy to run when, he, run when you thought pass was yeah. coming. Third pass. and eight, you're going to pass, he's running the draw. First yeah. and ten, you're thinking run, Play he's running down the field. No, yep. he, I'm telling you, he was way ahead of his time. And then, two. As a person, you saw how he treated the Marshall coaches mm -hmm. after everybody was killed in that plane wreck. He brought him in. He said, "Take what you." They, he, they wanted to use his offense, right. or whatever, and he basically take said, want. "Take what you want." Yeah, his ego, and he was at West Virginia. They were rival. Yeah, his ego never, never. Got you know, these guys today. That's my biggest hangout. Yeah, like Nick Saban will not shake hands with the other team. Yeah, he slaps his hand when he wins because he's not allowed lose. to lose. Yeah, you know, Bobby yeah. Bowden treated everybody the same way with class, and then, yeah, that's another reason that. This Florida State team is a lot of favorites of my friends. Yeah. Uh, the and even though the, those guys were, they were holding the ball up and all that, people like, had enough respect for the They coach. loved him. They were, yep. And Florida State was never as bad as Miami. Miami was always the oh, yeah. renegades down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they enjoyed it. Yes. 1974 Oklahoma Sooners. Um, Barry Switzer was their coach. If you remember Joe Washington, how he made people miss all the time. Yeah. They had the Selman brothers. <laughs> Uh, Salmon was, Leroy was the first pick. Uh, they trailed a little bit in one game against Oklahoma State, and they did, said, we don't like this coach. They scored five touchdowns in a row and beat Oklahoma 44-13. Absolute dazzling team led by the Salmons. Um, they were all huge, weren't they? All the I, all I had brothers. a Feldman story I have to share. Oh, good. Where these people, you know, first of all, they were three of the largest individuals you've ever seen. And their mom... When she had them, they each weighed 19 pounds. <laughs> now, a big baby's eight, nine, ten pounds. Yes. These boys weighed 18 pounds at birth. You got to give that mother credit. <laughs> it's a wonder she's still around. You got to give that mother she credit. Was. God bless Dewey, America. Dewey, Louie, and <laughs> yeah. Leroy. Leroy. <laughs> yeah. Leroy was the best. Yeah. He yeah. was the bunch. He was the yeah. best of the bunch. I remember him, like, just holding up that whole middle of the line. And oh, just, just dominant. Just throwing dominant. people around. Yeah, 1974, no, you, Oklahoma. Member. I know you old timers will put Bud Wilkerson's team in there, mm -hmm. I, and I don't. And just, maybe they won't. And I can't say you're wrong. No, I just put this team in there because I saw those with my own eyes. I understand that. I did not see this team pl play, but reading about them, and I've watched all the Michigan teams since then. I've never seen a great, 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 great Michigan team. I see very good ones. I see outstanding ones. This one sounds like it was the greatest by 390 far. Three ninety to fifty. <laughs> Nineteen forty-seven Michigan Wolverines. Yeah, my lord. They scored, what would you say, George? 390 to 50. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Um, one of the widest margins in, col in college football history. Um, they went into the, and they played USC in the uh, How'd that work Rose out? Bowl. 49 <laughs> nothing. they won the Rose Bowl. Um, they, they, in Michigan laurels, if you look up Michigan rankings on the Internet, you see over and over and over, it doesn't change. 
And that all the Chrysler other arena that's named after Fritz Chrysler. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yes. He must, yeah. Two, three, four, five, six. They change all, but the Michigan greatest Michigan team la labeled is the 2047 Michigan team, and, and that that will tell you something right there. Yeah, no, that, that does because you know we they, it beats us. We're a little not that we're young, but we're younger than. That what is team. it? The 2000. Yes, yeah, I'll make sure I get this right. 2018 Clemson team. Yeah, that's a modern. That's yeah. this is four years ago. They were bad news with our girl with our boy Dabo. Yep. Um, at that time, a, a quarterback came on the stage mm -hmm. that they, they raved about in high school, and he proved how great he is. And it's Trevor Lawrence, um, best season, one of the best seasons in school, school's history. He, he finally won the he won the battle. Remember, he didn't even start the Kelly year. Kelly Bryant, no, he ended up leaving and going to Missouri. He was upset. But I remember the truth of the matter is, I'm watching game two or three. I called him. I said, this Bryant can't pass if they want to beat Alabama. And Dabo came to the same conclusion. Uh, that's when you know uh, the coach has authority. When you, you bet your guys won a million games for you, you call him in the office and said, you know, I'm telling you right now, Kelly, uh, we love you. You get it, but you're not as good as Trevor. <laughs> we got to play Trevor. Uh, the team, you know, you can't fool kids. The kids do the whole time. That's I think it. they know it again now, to tell you the <laughs> You know, yeah, probably right now, I wouldn't doubt it. Hey, let's talk about it. Because of all the stuff we set aside, you can argue Michigan, Army. Here's what you can argue. They beat Alabama 44-16. I remember that game. Now, I do, too. And I keep thinking. Because Alabama's really good. You too. can't beat that. You, know, you understand? That's Alabama. And, and yeah. in the modern age of just four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about a, a Alabama in its peak under Nick Saban. Yeah. yeah. Dabo, Dabo and the boys from and Lawrence and the boys from <laughs> they, they, put they, a serious they them around. What he found out was he copied Alabama. He was an Alabama guy, and he figured out what Georgia's figured out now. Let's put our best players on defense, mm -hmm. and let's go get a great quarterback. You get a great quarterback, put your best players on defense, you have a runaway freight train. Clemson was that. Now Georgia's that today. Now I'm going to say this about Dabo. I'm not a big fan one way or the other, but – what he does do that I really appreciate, when he loses a game, he immediately gives the other team credit. None of this, we were off, we were sick, the quarterback had food poisoning, none of that crap. I remember that night he lost up at Syracuse. Oh, yeah. He said, give the credit to the guy in the other locker room. Yeah, he's truly Christ-centered of, of all the coaches in college, in college, and that's it. He, he figured out a long time ago, why would I take credit? Why well, want to give the credit to the players? And give the credit to the other team once in a while. George and I drives us nuts. No, we were that, off. We were yeah, off. In basketball, they, their team shoots bad. And they said, well, the reason we didn't win because we didn't shoot bad. Yeah. Do you think the other team might have guarded a little bit, George? I hope to God <laughs> that was what the answer is. The, the 19. Uh, the 2019 two, 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 That just happened, too. Oh, geez. Now, I would say this. I think they are the greatest offense in college football history. My I do think that. I don't think they're the greatest team. But I think they're the greatest offense. And yeah. let's add what they become. Burrow's like a. That's you know, how you know. A, a, he, and they, those receivers, Chase no one Jefferson. ever. No one had receivers. Like Chase that. and Jefferson. Nobody had receivers like that. And Marshall, who plays the starts for Carolina. Nobody had receivers. And Moss. Like that. And right and right, you go right down the line. This, I thought that's the greatest offense ever put on the field. Absolutely. There was no way to stop them offensively. You could outscore them. There's no question about it. But and, and defense, they were just decent. They weren't great defensively. But you talk about a great offense. They put up points all over the field. They beat they, Oklahoma. I don't think ever stopped them one time in the in the. No, field. that was embarrassing. It was. And let's give Burrow. He won the Heisman by the largest margin ever. And he should have. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, good. Point. He has proved that now that it was no fluke. That he's he's a, he's just a naturally great quarterback. As you'll watch him in the pros. That 2019 LSU team is a really special offensive team. The 1961 Alabama team. Think about that. All these great Alabama teams today, they don't match that. They don't match that, and, be, and there's a reason being. They were <laughs> the greatest defense ever played. How many points for the year? <laughs> How many, George? 25. 25 I points. I know. You think I mean per game. No. <laughs> no. For the season. They gave up 25 points in a time when people were scoring. This is 1933. In 1960, they gave 25 points up all year. Um, I remember Billy Neighbors just dominating. The, he was a two-way. How about that? Yeah, it's enough. That tells you right That's there. That's the end of that. 61, two-way players. Concrete today, Chuck Bednarik. There's Bednarik. nobody. There's no two-way players no. today ever thinking about no. it. If they do, they rave about them they for half They run three hour. pass patterns. They're not really two-way <laughs> players. But no, this guy. This was the greatest defensive team of all time. It had to be six, uh, 25 yeah, points. Yeah, yeah. And they played in the SEC. So it isn't like they were playing podunks. No. No. You know, so 
I had to put them in. Now, the Alabama, the, the modern-day Alabama teams are, are way better offensively. But you can't pass up a team no, that gave up 25 points, points all year. Season. <laughs> no. no. How about the 76? Oh, was that team talent? They were loaded. That team was so loaded with talent. They were right in my neighborhood. I watched them play and just dominate everybody. Notre Dame, Georgia. Um, they plummeted everybody. Uh, remember Johnny Majors was the coach. He told, he told Jackie Shero and his staff with Jimmy Johnson, that crew, go get 113 of the best players you can get. Mm -hmm. Remember, at that time you could recruit Yeah, George. there were no 85 no, limits. No 85 limit. Go get it. And they brought in every player they could and then ran off the ones they didn't want. End up winning the Sugar Bowl. Now how about Georgia. the title game? Only gave up a field goal. Yes. So, yeah. So, the Pitt Panther team of 1976 is my greatest Pitt Panther team. You can't leave out 1991 Washington. No. No, you cannot. No. And uh, for you local players, you watch Don James coach at Kent State. Yes. Went to Washington and, and built a powerhouse out there. Uh, killed Michigan in the Rose Bowl, 34-14. Um, dominant on defense. I watched film of them the other day. Uh, Steve Entman was the player of the year uh, on the number one defense. I remember that. And he was the number one pick in the draft. And, you know, you don't see many, a lot of times, defensive tackles be the number one pick in the draft. That 1971 Washington team is, made our list. And, they, and, you know, Washington's not a household name. Like, he's, like the Ohio State's and yeah, Alabama. Yeah, Southern California. You know, you know what else, too, the other thing? There was a time when the Big Ten didn't even want to go to the Rose Bowl. Because they knew they were getting Get beat. Whooped. They were getting whooped. And there, there's a classic picture, isn't it? Ed Dramansky, he's carrying, oh, yes. I mean, he's carrying Ron, yes. a coach off the field yes. the first time they did it. We got yeah, Bo. It was Bo. It was Bo. Yeah, because they had never won out they there. They never won out there. Yeah, they had never won out there. And, and, and Washington's up there not known for their recruiting. No. And so James had a, a te technician type team that, did, that never made a mistake offensively or defensively and returned many plays, just, uh, defensive plays for touchdowns. I like touchdown makers on defense. I, I like guys that can pick it up and score or, or take score. and go. Yeah, I like that a lot. That Washington team did that. How about uh, Lou Holtz's team, 88? Now, I, I, I want to say this for last for George because Norman Notre Dame brings the most arguments out. Like, no way, you can't, you're, they're better than How a four, about four horsemen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're better than a four horsemen. We, yeah. or one, but the best one I've seen was the 1988 version of Notre Dame under Lou Holtz. Um, look up their coaching staff if you want to see. They, they all went everywhere. They were all big-time coaches. Uh, they were they're, they're, they're the only 12-2 and two team in Irish history. 12-0. Um, I remember West Virginia came in undefeated, too, and they yep. had a Fiesta Bowl. Um, led by defensive coordinator Barry Alvarez um, and Jim Strong on offense, those coaches. Uh, they beat teams by double figures 10 times. Now, talk about how many NFL players. 29. 29. <laughs> not 9, not 19. 29 so NFL players. So you people argue with this. You're going to have to really come out strong and beat that argument. 11 yeah. first or second rounders. Yes. And, I, and if you, we'll name a couple of them. We'll name Rashid, Rashid Ishmael. The Rocket. Yes. We, and we'll, we'll talk about Ricky Waters, who ended up being a mainstay for the 49ers. We'll talk, we'll talk about defensively Todd Light, who was a great career. And uh, Chris Zordy had a great career. Oh, he was a he was tough Bears. in the middle yeah. there. So you can go uh, on and on. Old, old school, th you know, just knock you out of the way. Lou Holtz's goal from the time he was a little boy was the coach at Notre Dame. And when he got that job, they told him, "Listen, we're let you have we're gonna let you have six gifted players." And uh, and when you say when you say gifted at Notre Dame, that means Guys. you can get in yeah. normally without the grades you need. Because Notre Dame's really strict with grades. Absolutely. And that's all it took. So he recruited everybody else. Hey, Got six Give, gifted players yeah. in, became a runaway freight. Give me a real quick Ricky Waters story. Lou Holtz, the disciplinarian, they're out in Southern Cal, and he does something he doesn't do. And he calls them in. He said, I'm going to do something for you. He said, he thought he was letting them slide. Right. He says, we've sent you home. You get the first. Uh, not something. He said, four, you're not two. Yeah, discipline. Yes. He said, we're going to do something. He said, we're sending you home because obviously you have not. Thumbs up you know, for that, George and I. You know, Lou we love Holtz, that. we like to hear the discipline. Hey. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed our list. If you have anything to say, get in touch with us. We'll see you next week on Bottom Line Sports Talk.